In this video, I will introduce the Dagger approach to behavior cloning. Dagger provides a targeted way for collecting data for training an autonomous policy. I'm hoping it will improve the driving performance of the autonomous vehicle. In the video, I'll give an overview of the Dagger concept, as well as some practical ways to actually apply it to our real-world driving problem. It's not that straightforward. I'll then run through one iteration of the Dagger process, train some policies, and see how they go at autonomous driving. A quick heads up, the results are pretty encouraging compared to using plain old behavior cloning data. This is the 10th video in the overall project. The project is to build a deep learning Raspberry Pi controlled autonomous vehicle. The project will cover the system from end to end, from building the hardware, the base RC chassis, and attaching the Raspberry Pi and the associated electronics, and then getting it all working. It then works through the planning and development of the software that controls it all, as well as the training and the testing of various machine learning algorithms to see how well they go at line following. So far, I've been looking at behavior cloning for training the autonomous driving policies. And the results, well, they're kind of okay, in that I can train a policy that can reliably and consistently lap around a track. However, the average accuracy, the ability to keep the vehicle centered on the track, is not as good as hoped for. In this video, I will dive into the Dagger approach to behavior cloning to see if it can lead to any improvements in the trained driving policy. So, what is Dagger? Well, firstly, let's step back a little and review what's been going on with behavior cloning. With plain old behavior cloning, the expert driver takes control of the vehicle and drives around the track to collect a set of training data. This is basically a set of camera images and the matching steering and speed commands. This data is used to train a deep neural network policy that learns the mapping from each image to the associated control commands. This training is done using supervised learning. And with enough data and a suitable model size and structure, you can typically get a good fit of the model to the data. However, when you upload the policy to the vehicle and send it off driving around the track by itself, it often doesn't do as well as expected. In fact, it often ends up parked against a wall somewhere. The problems with behavior cloning are well known. The autonomous driver typically doesn't end up driving much like it was instructed to. The overall result being that the images encountered during training and those seen during the autonomous drive can differ significantly. So why the difference? Well, for the training data, the expert driver does the driving, which means they do a pretty good job of sticking closely to the track. The training data is almost exclusively images of driving on the correct driving line. Now when the trained policy takes over, things are a little different. We know that the trained policy does well on the training data. So initially, when close to the track, things typically go okay. The vehicle is able to follow quite closely. However, any small errors in the driving predictions will tend to move the vehicle slightly away from the ideal driving line. The problem is that as we move off this driving line, we start to see images or views of the track that were not well covered in the training data. So with these unfamiliar images, our policy model is a little less accurate with its predictions. We're starting to head down a slippery slope. As we drift from the ideal driving line, the worse the policy predictions become, and the worse our driving gets. Now, there are two ways to improve things. Firstly, we can try and train a better policy model. We can try and develop a more accurate model, train with more data, and get a model that generalizes better. If we can bring down the prediction errors of the policy, then the autonomous driver will experience conditions much closer to what was in the training data, and things should work okay. Another approach is to try and expand the scope of the training data. We want to train the policy so that it makes some reasonable predictions, even when the vehicle has drifted off from the ideal driving line. 
The basic idea is to make the training data look a bit more like the data experienced during the autonomous driving. In a previous video, I looked at two simple tweaks to behavior cloning that try and expand the range of the training data. They were the weaving and noise injection approaches. Now on to Dagger. With Dagger, the target is to expand the range of training data. Dagger stands for Dataset Aggregation, and it expands the training data in an iterative way. To start off with Dagger, we need an initial set of training data. This is typically obtained from, say, an expert driver. The data is used to train an initial policy model, which we can upload to the vehicle and then go for an autonomous drive. The idea is to use this data from the autonomous drive to expand the training data set. According to the algorithm, we need the expert driver to update the label data for these images. So this should give us an updated set of training data, which is more representative of what the autonomous driver actually experiences. And then we go through the process again. We train a new policy, go for a drive, update the aggregate training data set, and tweak the new labels. In essence, the Dagger algorithm builds up a broad data set for training that covers what the policy will likely encounter during its autonomous driving. So whilst Dagger sounds pretty straightforward, there is a practical problem. How do we, as the expert driver, actually go about updating or tweaking the labels? Given an image snapshot, it's very difficult to predict what the next set of steering actions ideally should be. Is this a better steering path? Or maybe this? Or what about this? For me, it's almost impossible for the expert driver to manually update the image labels. So I need to come up with some alternative ways to achieve the same result. I tried two different approaches for getting around this problem. For the first approach, I let both the expert driver and the autonomous policy run in parallel, both believing they are driving the vehicle the whole time. What the software on the Raspberry Pi actually does is to switch quickly between the two drivers, letting them each take it in turns at controlling the vehicle. Note that the diagram is a little misleading. Typically, the expert driver is controlling most of the time, with the policy only controlling for very short periods. So from this driving pattern, we can extract our training data. When it switches from autonomous to expert driver, we get a snapshot of the vehicle's state, which is influenced by the autonomous policy's driving behavior. And the data following this should be the expert driver reactions for this state. This approach takes a little longer to collect the training data, as we are not using every image frame, but it should result in a set of training data that matches the dagger requirements namely having the policy do the driving and the expert driver providing the related set of correct control data. Now with the second approach, the idea is to let the autonomous driver effectively do all of the driving, which of course means that we need a policy with at least some level of driving competence. The expert driver follows the drive closely, monitoring real time how things are going, and when needed, they provide some minor correcting inputs to kind of nudge the vehicle back onto a better line. For the expert driver, this is actually quite an easy process. It's like having some autopilot doing most of the driving, and they just offer some minor corrections when needed. We can then selectively pull out some of the training examples. Every time the expert driver offers some inputs or corrections, we create a training sample. So how does Dagger perform? Let's take a quick look. But firstly, just a quick refresher on how I compare the different policies. I basically let each train policy go for an autonomous drive around the track and collect a whole bunch of images from the camera. Offline, these images are passed through a trained neural network to calculate a reward. The reward is a measure of how well centered the track is in the image. So we get the reward values for each of the images and then average them to produce a reward versus speed curve. The higher the reward values, the better the performance of the policy. So how did things go? I ended up comparing three different policies. One was the plain old behavior cloning model, and the other two 
were policies trained using the two different dagger options. The behavior cloning policy is really a baseline. It was trained using a set of 10,000 training examples collected from regular expert driving data. There was no additional dagger data used for training this policy. So let's have a look how this policy went. Well, the good news is that the behavior cloning policy can now successfully lap the track. I've been tweaking the training over the past couple of months. The reward values are pretty good on the lightly curved sections. But on both the major curves, the reward values dip quite a bit. Actually, the major curves on this track are probably a little sharper than normal, so it's not really that surprising. Now, back to the data table. In terms of basic driving, the policy definitely passes OK. Now let's average the reward data for the drive and look at the reward versus speed curve. This forms our performance baseline. I'm not exactly sure why the lowest speed values are not the best. Maybe there was limited low speed examples in the training data. Now, let's look at the first of the dagger trained models. Remember that option number one switched quickly between the expert driver and the autonomous policy for collecting the dagger training examples. To train the policy, I used 9,000 examples from the common training data and augmented this with an additional 1,000 examples using the dagger collection method. So how did this policy go? It has no problems driving the vehicle around the track. Its behavior is a little different on the two main curves. On one curve, the reward values seem to remain quite high, but on the other curve, they seem to drop down quite a bit, much like what happened with the behavior cloning policy. But overall, it's looking good. It passes the basic driving test. Now let's check out the curve. Overall, there seems to be a general improvement across the range of speeds. It would be good to do some more additional testing on different tracks, but I'm happy with these results. And now let's try the second dagger option. Remember, option two let the autonomous policy do the driving, with the expert driver providing minor corrective inputs to improve the driving. For training the policy, a set of 9,000 samples from the common data was used, with an additional 1,000 samples from the dagger collection. Now let's look at the driving images. Well, the good news is that the driving seems to be far more consistent. The reward values do not dip as much on the main curves and remain consistently high on the straighter sections. So from the images and the reward values, it already looks as if the policy is performing a little better. So in terms of basic driving, the policy is fine. And now the average reward data? That also looks pretty good. At the lower speeds, the performance seems to be a lot better. At the higher speeds, it's a little less clear. So in general, it seems that the additional training data collected via DAGA does tend to lead to an improved policy in terms of the driving accuracy. And just for completeness, here is a quick overhead view of the DAGA option too, driving around a lap. Just to give you a feel of how closely the vehicle is actually tracking the line. So, DAGA seems to help us train an autonomous policy that performs a bit better than plain old behavior cloning, which is good. It gives us another option, together with weaving and noise injection, to improve our autonomous policies. But what I haven't answered yet is are any of these methods any better, or clearly better, than the other? And how does our best trained autonomous policy compare to me, the expert driver? In the next video, I will wrap up this section on behavior cloning with a bit of a showdown to see if there is a clear winner between the autonomous policies, and if they've got to the point where they can easily beat me. If you want to follow the overall project, please hit the subscribe button and feel free to like or comment.